The very pulse of the machine, yeah. The very pulse of the machine. Uh, this is a psychedelic trip that seems <laughs> heavily inspired by Hunter S. Thompson and 2001 A Space Odyssey mm -hmm. uh, is the only way, I, is the best way I can summarize this one. I'll, I'll save my opinions to the end. Uh, Sean, you get to lead off since we're alternating. What? How did you feel about the very pulse of the machine? So it's the all seen Chernobyl, the the HBO series. I have yes. Yeah. So what's the what's what's on the meter? Like not great, not terrible. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> right. That that that's that's kind of where I would put this one. Like okay. it was very mystical, kind of psychedelic, like you said, Justin. Mm -hmm. um and uh, but again the story is this woman's dragging another woman across this light psychedelic landscape for 30 minutes or however long the episode is and you know finds out that she can save her consciousness by i think again spoiler alert by kind of throwing herself into whatever the the matrix is and and dying <laughs> on this weird planet um, so it was okay. I didn't have strong, a strong reaction positively or negatively. I don't, I don't think there was, a, I don't think it was a strong story, but it wasn't a weak story. It kind of started out with a theme of self-sacrifice and then, um, ended with the theme of transformation. But yeah, yeah I, I, um, I, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of in your, in your camp as well. I, I didn't absolutely hate it. But sometimes, like with a lot of these, well, not with bad traveling, but with a lot of the other ones that followed, there was always some kind of like intellectual something that happens. And it's not just a straightforward story. And I think this one would have been really good just as a straightforward survival story. Like, let her have the, uh, you know, running out of auction and she's got to fix her suit. She's got to do all this. And to get back to, you know orbit or wherever she's going and that would have been a really compelling journey to see her make that even if she's having this the the hallucinations even if the drugs kind of affected her in a different way i think i think if you she you would have just been had a more concrete ending than this etheric kind of jumble of like you said space odyssey 2001 where you're like what the hell just happened and why is a baby floating in space i don't I don't understand what just happened for 20 minutes. He wasn't uh, sure what he would do with the newfound power, but he was sure he would think of something. Uh, hmm. If you've never read the Arthur C. Clarke, that's, that's uh, a pretty cool little resonance he sets up. Yeah. With the chapter with the monkeys, the one of the most famous scene uh, when the, the bone goes up in the air, the line in the, the, I think it's just a novella, not even a full novel is, you know, the, the monkey wasn't sure what he'd do with the newfound power, but he was sure he would think of something. And then you go to the space age and then it ends with Dave Bowman. Oh, nice. It, when Dave Bowman super evolves into whatever is next for humanity at the end of 2001, right. he wasn't sure what he would do with the newfound power, but he was sure he'd think of something. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, I've it's never read the cool. book. So that's, that's a good, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I might, I'm paraphrasing the quote might not be exactly that, but I do remember those from the book. So big Arthur C. Clarke fans. If you remember that differently, please feel free to correct me in the comments below. Um, but yeah, so this one, when I first watched it, and I, I'm not going to strongly disagree with either of you on this one. I think you're both pretty fair in your judgment. The first time I watched it, it really slid off me, um, for much of the same reasons you're talking about watching it a second time. It didn't hugely elevate it, but I could appreciate more, uh, the idea of IO as this synthetic life like semi-sentient artificial yeah. intelligence yeah. Uh, that is able to communicate. It's a theme from bad traveling. They're using a human corpse's brain to right. communicate with humans. Th this one for seemingly more benevolent ends, maybe. Yeah. Um, because we seem like up, that. Yeah. Cause they play with the idea. So she's on the drugs. And like you said, Josh could have worked very well as a survival tale where she's also hallucinating and having to yeah. survive both the hallucinations and, you know, trekking across the volcanic surface of Io with its sulfur dioxide atmosphere. Right. Um, pretty tough task in and of itself. Um, but the way they played the narcotics, it creates doubt as to whether, you know, what she's seeing is real or not. 
Right. Um, and then, but we end with a POV shot from an approaching spacecraft and her hailing, presumably as one with the planet Io. So I think my biggest problem with this at this point is not so much that it's weak, it's that it's it's not an encapsulated story in any real sense of the word. Mm. Because what's interesting is, well, what are the implications of this? Who created Io? Why is it there? I'm not saying it's invalid to leave that mysterious. Right. I don't prefer it. Yeah. Is is where I'm at. And we're going to get into that. Uh, probably not this recording, but when we get to uh, another episode, I think there's another episode that suffers from that as well of the, this was a good start. What else? You know, yeah. which is. I think the author also was just trying to, to be cute and subvert the trope of Deus Ex Machina. You kind of just reverse it. So I don't know what the Latin is for, um, uh, you know, a machine from, you know, machine saves you from God. Right. Yeah, but that's yeah. kind of, that's kind of what this episode was. In a... Sean, that's a great point. Cause I, that's a thought I had when she's on the cliff, you know, and it's like death or it, I'll either live forever or die. And I'm like, I was thinking like, this is a very, and there's not, not that there's anything wrong with telling these kind of stories, but it's a very atheistic worldview. Cause as someone with a religion who believes in an afterlife, I would not have made her choice. Right. You know, I, I would have like, no, no, no. I think I'm going to die what I am because I'm aware of what I am. And I know what I believe about um, the afterlife. I don't think I'm going to risk entrusting my persona to weird alien machine. I just met on a bad acid trip. Uh, so yeah. yeah and so I that's, think that's a great uh, one. Sean. Uh, one thought that I just had was that one thing I like, I love about short stories is the ability to do ambiguity, ambiguity, uh, ambig ambiguity, ambiguity. I like I'm ambiguity. I'm, like I'm a writer. I'm a writer. It's like not antiquity a, only different. Yeah. I'm yeah. a writer, not a talker. Um, I, so I love being able to do that in short stories, but it seems like they took it like to another level instead of like, they could have done that. Um, but brought it down just a bit. Like if you didn't have, the the entire psychedelic experience of we don't know whether or not she's actually having a psychedelic event or this is real and then if it was real have the transference that would have been cool like because when we know it's real but they kind of took the ambiguity and then the uh psychedelic experience of all of that and mashed it all together and i was just like i don't know what the hell is going on and i want to like it but i don't have enough I don't have enough to like it, actually. I don't know. I mean, it definitely makes you think, right? It, it yeah. makes you question, like, what is consciousness, right? Are we, you know, are all our ideas in our head or do our ideas come from something else? Is the, you know, is the mind an antenna or a transducer of some sort, right? Or, um, you know, where are those ideas coming from? Are you pulling them? Are they coming from you? Are they coming from something else? Right. Uh, what happens when you die? What happens when you die if you transfer your, you know, are you really transferring your consciousness or are you just transferring the data that's in your mind? So it raises a bunch of really intriguing and existential questions. It just, you know, didn't do it in a way that was not confusing. <laughs> right. Exactly. 